Bike car, Timex 1 radio show. Good day, eh? This is Sedlow, and welcome to the DCS Mission Editor. Today, we're going to talk about how you can make a trigger that will listen for a player to uh, input a command into uh, their joystick or throttle. And what I mean by that is if they press a button, if they, uh, for this example, we're going to use if they uh, press the stores jettison button in the F4, um, you can make a trigger that will listen for that. And uh, then you can make an action of that, like say, hey, uh, Ford 2-1 is just jettison stores or whatever you want to do. Um, first of all, we're going to need to know the uh, commands. Now, commands are numbers. Um, there's a device ID that you're going to need to know and the command number itself. And then you're going to know the uh, you're going to need to know the range of the uh, motion. <clears throat> How do you find all of these? Well, you can go through the Lua files included in the DCS uh, module to try to find them. It's they're there, but it's complicated in how to find them. I found a much easier method is using a, a little trick that you do to an auto exec dot cfg file um what is that i don't know what it means auto execute i think uh it's not, it's uh it's not as harsh as it sounds um first of all go into your save games folder into your dcs uh build and the config folder within there now there's a bunch of folders and a bunch of files. Um, you should have, or you may have an auto exec that's a U T O E X E C dot C F G file in there. If so, great. If not, don't worry. You can make one. Um, you can open up notepad or notepad plus plus or a similar text, uh, editor, and you can create this yourself. So, if you have auto exec CFG, just open that up. And if not, just open up a blank uh, notepad um, file. And you're going to add this. Input equals new paragraph, weird paragraph, or weird uh, quote thing, bracket. New, new paragraph command underscore code underscore, underscore tooltips equals true, comma. New paragraph, weird looking bracket, just like this. And what that is uh, going to do is, well, first of all, save it. And you can either save it if you already have the file, otherwise, save it as auto .cfg. Um Now, start up your DCS. And when you're there, go into the options. The controls panel and for the aircraft you want uh, in this case it's an f4 we're going to look for the stores jettison um, release on mine i have it down to my throttle and check this out see what just came over there look you hover it over there hover it over here See those numbers? The device ID in this case, one of the numbers we need is 27. And the command we need is 3036. So write those down 27 3036. Let's go into your mission. And I've got one here. Okay, we are in the mission editor that is and we'll go to our triggers here as you can see i've already uh, got an f4 in the game player controlled i've got my start flag to go on here i've got my handy little page break thing that i like to use we're going to make a new trigger here and we're going to go listen or jettison because we're going to be listening or waiting for the player to make that input the condition is flag equals one. So the mission is started. 
and we'll go here to the actions and go down almost to the bottom here and we're going to go start listen command and this is where we will plug those numbers in that we had before now first of all the command is the 3000 series number and in this case it's 3036 let's pop down to the bottom the cockpit device and that is number 27. okay let's start up from the top again we've got 3036 the flag now this is the flag that will become true when this cockpit um, event this command is pressed and we're going to call it uh, jet pressed so jettison button pressed the hit count is important you should not leave it at zero we're going to switch it to one right away so we don't forget the hit count is how many times that button is pressed so we are waiting and listening for this button to be pressed once you can make a trigger where say you want the player to hit the button five times and on the fifth time it will activate so that's what this is for if you leave it at zero it's just not going to work so let's put it back to one the value limit minimum and value limit maximum uh, are important and they are variable right now negative one and one is the range and that includes the full motion uh, the full travel of that particular button or lever or whatever in this case the jettison button is only in or out so out meaning in the normal position is zero and in fully pressed is one so if we switch this to zero this trigger is going to fire immediately upon entering game because in the unpressed state the value is zero so what i like to do is make it at least 0 0.05 now this can vary as well because sometimes there's buttons or knobs that have different positions and um you know you might be wanting the second position which could be a value of minus or point positive 0 0.2 to positive 0 0.6 that can happen as well uh, this is just a basic overview this is going to be in or out on or off okay um so the value limit i put 0.5 and the value maximum is one one being fully pressed in all right so we've got our uh, listening for the jettison button to be pressed let's uh, control copy this or control c we're going to make a new trigger and we're going to say jettison pressed the condition will be that flag being true which is jet pressed and then you can do your action you can say sorry my cat's on the keyboard <laughs> what are you doing get out i'm gonna have to redo that trigger no i don't um message to all citizen button pressed omg look out below or something to that effect and let's clone this break trigger here what you can do and what i do here is um I rename these i don't just say break i say jettison and then you know whatever the next one will be um, you can rename it there and it, it's a good way to keep it coordinated you can also um, of course uh, change the colors so you could make these yellow the next one's green or the next one's blue or whatever you want just to keep it organized okay so we're listening for this to happen when this happens once this flag will be true so our next thing is when that flag is true this message will come out let's uh, go fly here alrighty waiting for the computer to uh, do its thing um, are you enjoying or getting anything out of these videos um, please let me know um, I also take requests <laughs> 
if there's something particular you want to see. And if I know how to do it, I could probably show you how. Um, a lot of the stuff is things I've learned online, watching other tutorials, uh, reading things, and just sort of futzing around with it myself. So uh, while this is not any new information for anybody, um, I'm not like breaking news here. This is just uh, something that um, I find, I think you might find useful. So there you go. Whatever. Keep babbling on there, Sedlo. All right. Um, contests. Is anybody interested in contests? I have some Sedlo patches that I could use as a prize. I uh, was just thinking about things I could do with that. All right, we're in game here. Let's just press fly. Um, now I've maxed out my settings here just for an experiment, so things might not be uh, too <laughs> uh, smooth. But let's. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot. I uh, got a new joystick. Well, I pulled my old joystick out of retirement, um, and I haven't found anything yet. So. Let's go. We're going to go jettison. Let's see. First of all, the Stantum is carrying weapons. I'm going to press the emergency jettison, and the message should appear in the top left or top right. There it goes. Jettison button pressed. Oh my God. Look out below. See that? It's done. So it works. Um, why would you do this? Well, there's various reasons. You could uh, perhaps. You're doing a training mission and you want to uh, measure when the uh, student does a certain thing um you can also do it in a combat mission like for this example we've uh, just pressed jettison you might have a radio message saying hey i just dumped my stores or whatever um keep in mind this really only works in single player um it only works for player controlled aircraft can work somewhat multiplayer if the player flying is the player hosting uh, but it'll only work for that aircraft it will not work for anything else and to be honest even if you're hosting it it may not work so single player only um, people ask me why i don't make multiplayer missions or campaigns and it is things like this these little tricks and tips um, are what I think make my campaigns and, and creators like Ground Pounder and Reflected and Baltic um, unique in that there's levels of detail that we can get into, uh, but it only works for single player. So um, I'm not interested in making a campaign which is not as detailed and, in my opinion, realistic. So until these sorts of things can be uh, measured and used in multiplayer, I, I'm not going to be making multiplayer content. So, um, sorry, <laughs> sorry, not sorry, I guess. Uh, there's lots of fun to be found in single player. And uh, yeah, if you haven't dipped your toes into the single player stuff, a lot of these campaigns that uh, these professional campaign makers are doing are really immersive and, uh, and I think are great. So anyway, that's it for now. I hope you learned a little bit and uh, we'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. <laughs>